Okay, let's take a look at Explore 4, uh, the history of life on Earth. Go ahead and draw out your notes and put your date. Go ahead and put your reference, Discovery Education, Living Earth, 3.1.4, Explore number 4. And there's your essential question. Go ahead and write that down. What are some possible scientific explanations for aspects of the fossil record? such as gaps and the sequential nature of fossils. And then tell me what you know or think. Okay, well, hopefully you took a moment to, to do that. Uh, we're going to start with Roman numeral one, and we're just going to be tracking your text there. Uh, interpreting the fossil record. Uh, letter A, the fossil record provides a record of the history of life and has been important for developing evolutionary theory. Before we had things like DNA and molecular biology to help us out, um, we had to rely on uh, things that we discovered or found here on Earth, and that includes the fossil record. Um, even though it's pretty neat to find fossils, and if you've been to a museum, you've seen many fossils of life that no longer exist here on Earth, uh, it's not a complete record. It is incomplete. Okay, so let's first kind of talk about how fossils are formed. Uh, it's pretty rare to actually form fossils. You have to have the right conditions. Um, obviously, a fossil is formed from the remains of an organism. You've seen movies like Jurassic Park where they show an insect that might have gotten trapped inside uh, some tree sap, uh, which we call amber. Uh, that's pretty neat. That kind of gives us a, uh, a, a total fossil, soft and hard tissue inside there. Uh, the reality is that that really doesn't happen with, with everything. Um, oftentimes, um, Obviously, we're going to be looking for the remains of organisms. That's one way you can form uh, a fossil. If it's not the actual remains of an organism, then it's some trace, some evidence that that animal was there. Think of uh, an animal, a dinosaur, walking in um, a seabed or in some mud, and it leaves a footprint, and that footprint uh, is preserved right? This, this would be what we call uh, trace fossils or borrows is the term. Um, fossils, uh, truthfully, most organisms die without leaving a trace of their existence, um, especially if you are an animal that dies on land. You know, there's a good chance if you die on land that weathering is going to destroy your remains maybe other animals uh, eat you, eat your remains, right? Leave nothing behind. Maybe uh, animals uh, or other natural processes uh, just destroy your bones. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why uh, fossils on land aren't often preserved. Um, so where do you, uh, where's your best chance of forming a fossil? Uh, areas where deposition occurs. Remember deposition is this idea that you have uh, weathering, uh, you have detritus, uh, the breakdown of uh, material, it erodes. It can either be blown or it can be transported by water. Um, and you can have that deposit on land. You can have it deposit in water. Um, so whenever you have a chance to do rapid burial, and you can eliminate the presence of oxygen. You can cover something pretty quickly. Uh, those are your best chances. And so that's honestly where we find many of our fossils is in uh, deposition regions, um, seabeds, uh, lakes, rivers. Maybe you had a volcano. Uh, you think about Mount Vesuvius in uh, Italy and all that ash uh, buried the whole town of Pompeii and we have uh, these concrete um, castings of the people as they took shelter, right? Fossils, right? But th those are what we we're talking about where you have rapid deposition. Um, 
soft body parts are not very good candidates for fossilizing because they're going to rot or something's going to eat it, right? Bony parts, your bones, the shells of animals, um, those tend to be uh, good candidates for fossilizing. And so uh, that's often what we find. And oftentimes the fossil record is, as your text says, overly represented by these hard parts. Um, it leaves us uh, with a disproportionate amount of uh, hard tissue versus soft tissue, right? And that makes it difficult for us to really determine all the animals, all the organisms, all the plants that may have been living in a particular environment at a particular time. Fossilization is a slow process. Fossils are continually forming. Uh, as a result, fossils may um, be very close to each other, or they may even actually be mixed up, um, even though uh, long spans of time may have passed between one organism living and another living organism, uh, another organism living. Uh, they still could be appear fairly close in the fossil record. So that it, this is the job of a paleontologist is to try to parse out all these uh, these possibilities. Okay. Um, other issues that make it difficult for fossils, if fossils do form in sedimentary rock, uh, well, there's a problem. Sedimentary rock often uh, erodes. Uh, it breaks down. And on top of that, uh, you have new rock always forming on top of it. So you can have what we call unconformities. Um, this can sometimes leave you with the impression that uh, fossilization, uh, uh, animals uh, changing from one organism to another, uh, has occurred faster than it really has. Okay. Other issues that make it difficult to find fossils, uh, plate tectonics. You know, when you have that uh, oceanic uh, crust and it collides with continental crust, uh, the denser oceanic crust will subduct. And as it subducts, there's a lot of friction and it causes the rock to melt. Um, you remember that that causes volcanism along the ocean coasts right? Well, if it's going to melt rock, it's going to melt everything inside that rock, including the fossils. Okay, so plate tectonics uh, often have destroyed many of the fossils that we have uh, uh, that are out there. Uh, and then frankly, there are a lot of fossils, but we just can't see them, right? Unless we're lucky enough to have uh, a natural event that exposes rock. Um, oftentimes, historically, Mining operations uh, have, by digging deep to mine ores, uh, have come across fossils, quarrying, excavation as well. Sometimes you want to cut a, uh, a road across the mountain pass, so you excavate down through the rock and you discover fossils that way as well. So these are some of the ways we have been able to uh, uncover rocks uh, that, uh, that contain fossils. Uh, regardless of all of this, um, paleontologists have done a fairly decent job of assembling all these fossils um, in a sequential sort of order uh, and have been able to uh, show kind of the history of life on Earth, um, regardless of uh, the difficulty in finding those fossils. All right, we'll go ahead and write a summary paragraph and we'll talk to you soon.